Does everything look good? I hope so. Hello, everybody. My name is Ramsey's Wrath, and welcome back to Shadows Over Loathing. Oh, we just got off the bus in the last episode. It has been a couple days since I, I played this. Uh, the bell over the door jangles as you walk into Murray's Antiques. The young woman at the counter looks up at you as you enter. Oh, hi. You must be Ram Ram. We don't get many customers this time of night. Or at all, really. Yeah, that's me. What were you expecting? Oh, that's embarrassing. My left mouse on the screen. Uh, yeah, Murray didn't say much about you, but he did give me that letter in the mail. My name's Jessica. Oh, geez, you're soaking wet. Come in and I'll get you a towel. You walk over to the counter, trying not to drip on any of the vintage brick brac, brick brac, brick a brac. As J Jessica grabs a threadbare towel from the shelf and pulls off the tag before tossing it to you. Thanks. Is my Uncle Murray here? His letter wasn't very specific. He isn't. You said that in kind of an ominous way. Where is he? Uh, Jessica sighs. I wish I knew. He had a line on another artifact and said it was going to be a tough one. I told him he should get some of that backup. Well, he wasn't willing to wait. He just wrote that letter, told me to mail it, and if he didn't come back, is there something I'm missing here? There's an antique shop, right? You try... You make trying to talk great Aunt Ruthie into selling her mother's Chesterfield sound like a deadly spy mission. Yeah, it's going to take some explaining. Well, I'm definitely intrigued now. Explain away. We don't have a lot of time just now, but follow me and I'll give you a quick sketch. Okay, Jessica leads you into the back room furnished with some desks and some strange looking machinery. Welcome to our back office, the hub of our little operation. I'm guessing by operation, you're talking about something other than antiques. Well, yes and no. You see, a few years ago, Murray found out there's a bunch of antiques circulating that are, uh, hinky. Hinky? What's hinky? Would be a real understatement. Murray called them tainted, dark magic, real bad mojo, you know, cursed. Oh, for th I thought a second you were making bathtub gym <laughs> or something. No, uh, it's no joke. Uh, that's what our job is here. The antique store is just, well, not exactly a front. We find a lot of regular antiques, too, and selling them keeps us in scratch, but we're really trying to hunt down all these evil doodads, neutralize them so nobody gets hurt, and Uncle Murray went out to get one and never came back? That's the long and short of it. Yep. What do you say? Are you in? Absolutely. I'm always up for a crazy adventure. Great. You hear the shop door opening for a moment. A goblin pokes her head into the office. Hello? Oh, hey. That's swell timing. Hey, Gabby. Murray's sister kid showed up. Come meet him. Murray's sister's kid. Okay, I was a little confused. Murray's sister kid sounded a little weird. Um... Hi, Gabby. Pleased to meet you. I go by her, actually. I go by them, actually. Uh, just the first one. Hi, Gabby. Hi. Uh, hello. The pleasure is all Gabby's. Gabby, would you be a deer and carry his log luggage off to Murray's room and grab some of the blankets and stuff out of the cupboard? He can sleep there till he found Murray. You've gotten it? Gabby picks up your suitcase and carries it through the door in the back of the room. Great. I really could use some sleep. Okay. White cat is snoozing on an old towel. Oh, he's so cute. Ask Jessica about it. What's this cat's name? Calliope? Is that how you say that? Murray got her a couple of years ago. Scritch behind the cat's ear. I love this game. Give Calliope good scritching. But she doesn't react at all. Why doesn't Calliope like me? Well, she'll warm up to you eventually. Try giving her some sardines. She loves those. Do you have any sardines? No, we're all out. <laughs> but you can get some more tomorrow. They have them um, at the Cola War Surplus store next door. Okay. Let's find out how this door leads. You open the door, and there's just a brick wall behind it. Apparently, it goes nowhere. Okay. I love this game. Hey, Jessica, whose desk is this? Charles Wallace, our handyman. He keeps fix He's up fixing the leak on the roof right now, but he'll be back later tonight. I see. You don't have any time to play games right now. You can't even... Hazard a guess to what this contraption does. Modern radio stands here. 
in defiance of the concept of antiques. <laughs> what an edge lord! What an edge lord! There's nobody to call right now. It, this game just keeps reminding me that I have no friends. Thanks. Uh, you're not sure what this clock is telling, but it sure isn't time. Okay. This desk is a mask. Ask just about it. Whose desk is this? Murray's. He. I keep nagging him to straighten it up before someone bumps into it, and we have to call the National Guard to dig him out of the avalanche with the curse-proof shovels and a squad of exorcists handy. Anyway, not best to mess with it. All right, I won't. Let's go in. Hang on a sec. You can't go to sleep just yet. I'm pretty sure I can. I bet I could do it right now while I'm still standing up. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, I hate to spring this on you, but there's something that we need to do before the night is over. Wow. Mission already? Uh, you know those cursed artifacts I was talking about since info on them is so sketchy. We've been working on a machine that can detect them with radio waves. I call it the Detectotron 1000. We've gotten it up and running since Murray left and it turned out to be tainted thing practically right out on our doorstep. Hmm, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, it's not great. I was gonna have Gabby go get it. That's why she came over tonight, but since you turned up out of the blue, I guess there's no time like the present. I'm probably not exaggerating when I say there's literally no time except for the present. What? As in, there not be might not be a future? You won't have to go... Uh, you don't have far to go. It's just down on the other end of the block. If the readings are right, the newspaper a newspaper office that got shut down earlier this year should be in there. Well, Gabby will go with you. She's good in a fight. A fight? Heck yeah. Yeah, well, hopefully it won't come to that, but you never know. Hey, Gabby. Gabby appears with an expecting grin. Go to the newspaper office with Ram Ram. And help him get that, okay? Okay. Gabby is ready for the action. Let's mosey. Gabby has joined your companion. Make an excited sigh. According to the readout, yeah, a man's fedora probably. <laughs> of course. All fedoras are cursed. Get out of here. And uh, I'm supposed to what? Just break in and take it? Well, not exactly break in. I managed to finagle a spare key out of the guys <laughs> at the realtor's office. I'm pretty sure that counts as breaking and entering. You'll be in and out and back here in bed before you know it. Sweet. Let's do this. Gab with Gabby. How are you doing, Gabby? It's the beans ease, Ram Ram. All right. Do you just ominously stand there? Okay. Newspaper office. Hey, look at this guy. This hobo seems... Wholly unperturbed by the rain. Nice weather we're having. <coughs> I choked on my own spit. He smiles and then looks up and let the rain splash on his face for a while. I like his style. Heh. <laughs> Suits me just fine, I guess. A wise man once said, rain falls on a poor man and rich alike. I like that too. Was that before umbrellas were invented or? My name's Gus, by the way. Hi, I'm Ram Ram. Pleased to meet you, Ram Ram. You say you have a couple of meat to spare, would you? Sure do. Thank you very much, Ram Ram. Old Gus wouldn't forget your kindness. You bet. Take her easy, Gus. Probably don't want to be in here anyway. Going seems inaccurate. <laughs> the note on the door says, please. Dang. You think it's up from all the cursed items? Why everything is shut down and not doing good? Given the current conditions, dark and stormy, you probably shouldn't wander into any alleys. Fair? I mean, fair. Let's go in. You take a deep breath and lock the door. You give the key to Gabby for key, uh, keepsake. All right, we're looking for a fedora. The note says, Robson, first... Hinden, then Carver. Who's next? Vendable says if Burgess comes for him, he's gonna karate chop the desk in half. Sincerely, <laughs> Curtis. Curtis. P.S. What's a karate? I have no idea. You got reporter's cufflinks. Is that a item I can wear and then fight? Uh. 
always check and the right one says your sources it really makes you think uh plus one mysticality yeah um that just does hot armor i'm assuming it goes yeah it does that adds to mysticality which i'm pretty sure is my spatula yeah yeah so that that's good to have there's a pink slip on this desk read it hinden I'm not paying you to publish cockamamie conspiracy theories. In fact, I'm not paying you at all anymore. Clean out your desk and hit the road. Grover Burgess, editor-in-chief. P.S. <laughs> Do you like the word cockamamie uh, that I used up there? It's slang term that I coined. It means ridiculous or implausible. I think it's going to really catch on. I mean, probably. Note says, Tucker, I got you that bottle you wanted. I stuck it under the water cooler where Burgess can't... Oh, hiccup. Can't find it. And ride us out to the proies? Back. Under the water cooler, huh? Surely it's not still there, but it wouldn't hurt to check. Coffee! Yeah, we got a nasty old cup of coffee. Came out like spoiled milk. It really did get karate chopped. Searched the wreckage. Nothing vendable must have taken all this stuff out before smashing it. <clears throat> <clears throat> the drawer on this desk is slightly ajar. Ew, you got nasty old leftovers. Is that going to be like the vegetables? Probably. There's crippled up pink slip. Carver, I can't believe I have to tell you this, but it's against company policy for an employee to steal the printing press. You're fired. You are so fired that I need a new phrase to describe it. I'm giving you the axe. And if I see your face in here again, I will both give you the axe and set you on fire. Gro this editor-in-chief is kind of a dingle-dangle. P.S. How did you even lift it? You must have had, what, five accomplices? Unbelievable. You make a mental note. You never pick a fight with this carver person. Oh, you got a pneumatic tube system operating manual. I am gonna fail. Hey, look, a trap door. That's what was under the water cooler. Oh, God. I wanna waste of time, waste of time, waste of time, waste of time. Ooh. Uh. Let's go in there. Hey, we found XP! Uh. That's the wrong button. I forgot which one it was for. There it is. Okay. Hey, we have 15. Part of me wants to do that because the items in this game are really where it's at. So I think I'm going to save up for the 30 and we'll do that. Unless there's like an insane... I didn't mean to do that. I guess we're fishing in the water cooler. They really should have provided cups and then it didn't tell me what was going on. Okay. Okay. Okay, I, they wouldn't pull up the thing to to go through. Oh dear God Hey, there's the fedora <laughs> It's the control panel for the pneumatic Oh God, it's a calendar from 11 years ago. Take a closer look. There is a huge black skull scrawled on July 22nd 1917 I have a feeling that's going to be a thing for the thing and the stuff July 22nd, 1917. Check it out. Oh, God. The control panel has a green button, a red button, a big lever, a knob with a bunch of letters on it, and a series of colored lights that are all currently off. Consult the manual. Oh, God. Continue. Uh... So first was push the green button. So we need uh, three. The green b button makes a satisfying click and you hear a motor starting up somewhere. Uh, pull the lever. Pull the lever, crunk. Wrong lever. You pull the pump with a very pleasing kerchunk and the motor noises turns on a sort of a loud, windy whine. A yellow light is glowing in the console. I never got yellow. Turn the knob. Let's do the knob. Oh, dear God. The options on the knob range from A to G.
Hey, we did it. <laughs> it was C. Oh, well, that means I don't get experience points for fighting those guys. I bet they are super hard. Well, someone's going to get very strange mail. And how? Ah, oh, nice. What were those things anyway? What were they doing here? Were they trying to start an underwater newspaper? That wouldn't work. The ink would smear. Cool. It's a very old manhole cover. An ominous, vaguely person-shaped stain on the ground. You have to search everything in this game. Every nook and cranny. This must be the hat Jessica wanted you to recover. You got terribly cursed fedora. Cool. Anything else in here? Newspaper? Ooh, you scared me. You scared me so bad. Gabby grins and gives you a thumbs up. Thanks, Gabby. You're the support I need in this life. Uh, there's an underground press. Literally, there's still newspaper left in it. Take newspaper. You got item underground newspaper. Cool. Let's check out what it does. Uh, it's more of a manifesto, specifically calling out the government's suppression of the local newspaper and the importance of free press. There is an amusing but puzzling cartoon about a dog arresting a mouse for throwing a brick at a cat's head, which the cat didn't seem to mind. Okay. Yeah, very interesting. Handful of cleaned water. Okay. Here, an ally who whom is on fire. Cool. Does it look cursed, but it has a palpable aura of menace about it. Let's wear it. Now we're cursed with being handsome. Okay, was there anything else in this place? Nothing left of interest here. Got it. Got it. Okay, we read that. I think we read all that. Jack Dempsey removes his teeth, improving boxing skill. <laughs> Says Dempsey in the interview. Keep watching. Oh, is this supposed to be like TV? Okay. There's a half-finished letter in the typewriter. The typewriter's Reginald, I think Burgess is on to us. We've gotten careless. In fact, maybe I shouldn't keep typing this letter out instead of just talking to you in person. Why am I doing this? Meet me under the water cooler this afternoon. Ah, crap. Here comes Burgess with a pink slip. Sincerely. Doesn't say who it's from. The writer must have gotten fired before they could type their name. Also, under the water cooler. What's that all about? We already got it. We already got it! Um, we got the nasty Kofifi. What's down this way? Somebody has scratched some weird symbols in the sidewalk here. It's too late. The bank is closed. Securberus. I like that name a lot. Oh, God. Gabby's coming for us. Can I go fishing in this? Ah, oh, dang it. Is there another one? Nope. It's trash. It's full of trash. You find a discarded bottle of cologne. You got cheap cologne. Uh, increases your stench armor. Or until you use another potion. I mean, might as well. No, no, we're gonna save it. We're gonna save it for later. We're gonna, we're gonna save it. Okay. It's a bus stop. I like Gab Gabby's creepy little walk. I appreciate you, Gabby. Looks like you found the hat. I found a hat. I guess this is the one you meant. It doesn't look unusual, although. Yeah, well, it does creep me out a bit, and I can't really put my finger on why. I know what you mean. Feels like you have a headache, except you don't actually. More like a feeling of dread, like something terrible is about to happen, but I don't know what it is yet. Well, it's definitely not related to the fact that I need you to take that hat and go sit in that machine over there. Oh, uh, why? That's our uncursing machine. Gotta get that curse off the hat, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But, uh, what? Can we just put the hat in the machine? Why do I need to be involved? Because the machine needs a mind to guide the uncursing process. Together, you lift the curse from the hat and transform it into some kind of allegoric dreamscape that the machine can transfix. Uh, what? Sorry. I know, it's a lot. Let me phrase this. <clears throat> the uncursing machine uses your subconscious mind to drive a wedge between the item and its curse. The item is cleansed relatively easily, but that doesn't negate the curse fully. Once separated from the item, the machine stores a curse and allows you to psychi psychically protect 
project into it and try to resolve the metaphorical scenario at the core of its existence. That's where things can get a little weird. Yeah, I know it sounds crackers, but you'll ha just have to give it a try, understand? I am brain melted. This must be Charles Wallace. You must be Charles Wallace. I'm Ram Ram. That I am. Pleased to meet you, Ram Ram. What do you do around here? Oh, your gentle handyman sort of stuff. I keep the lights on and the water running. I built the Detectotron and that uncursed machine too. Wow, that's some really high-tech wizardry. Ah, it's nothing really. Uh, let me ask you something. Ah, oh, okay, never mind. All right, let's do this. You sit in the chair, which surprisingly is comfortable, and pull the weird metal dome thing down over your head. Would you like to uncurse today? Um... I the ter <laughs> the terribly cursed fedora. No sooner have you sat down the machine with a hiss, positively whiffs the fedora straight up into the dome. The hat rattles around li like an angry snake in a cement mixer. Oh God, that's that's quite the the visual. And after a good loud minute, flops limp into <laughs> wet into your lap. Whatever ominous energy once possessed the terribly cursed hat is gone. Now it is simple. A terrible hat. You got uncur <laughs> uncursed fedora. But the curse itself still lives, transfixed as a dreamlike construct within the machine. Now, to get rid of that curse? Hmm. See, curses are like energy, Ram Ram. They can't be created or destroyed, only changed. Can't remember who said that. Isaac Newton? Newt? Newman. Newton? Newton? Newman? Yeah, the machine knows to take a curse from one object and put it on itself but it for how you change the curse well i don't know that's some higher consciousness spiritualist stuff i don't know much about that i'm no more newton newman sort of guy sounds safe i'll do that ah um so that goes home fedoral reserve ah i I heard the, I heard thy death call, creature. Rest now, I will be finding thy Mordor. Mordor? Murderer? A tree felled before its time, a ground stained with sin. Oh, yes. Uh, even in Arcadia, there's death. All right, that, even in paradise, there's a killer. Okay. Thou know who I am and why I am here? I cut a. There has been a Mordor. What knoweth thou Mordor? That I did not do the Mordor, that is all. What more have th for me, for thee? Only this. I am one of three brothers. One of us always tellings the truth, one of us always lies. And the third does not speak in at all, but honks. If I find in the liar, there is nothing I can do to save in thee. I cut a, thou art a servant of the wood. Blessed be the branches. Blessed be. Big power in wood today, Cutter. I a tree has fallen in the forest and has made a sin. But me not a sinner, I assure thee. Thou claim to be without sin? None of us is without sin, but mine do not run into Mordor. Then whose? Look for my brother. Lead me not astray. Nay, okay. You, you look like a Mordor. Something is rotten in the woodcutter. I, Mordor with preservations at its source. Speak to me of no preservations. I have no thing to say, for I do not tarry with them. What do thou tell in me? I am troubled by the Mordor, but of it I know no no thing. I warn thee, for my forgetness makes no room for liars. Thou do what thou must, Cutter, I have no doubt. Thy brother speaking of three brothers. I do not honkin, sire. I spearin upon it. Never thou has honkin, never. Tis a sin in my eyes. 
I think it's him. Look to my brother. <clears throat> I say I did not do the murder. Also, I say I'm one of three brothers. One of us always tells the truth. One of us always lies. And the third of us does not speak in at all, but honks. Thou lie about honking. What say? Thy brother's honking not. Thou wouldst lie to the cutter of the wood. Thou wouldst do Mordor in the wood. I, thou hath the right of it. I sought only to distract in thee whilst I make my mistake. Goodbye, Cutter. Do not run from me, tree. It was the first one. Thou do not run. Nay, I grow in. In 100 years, I will hoth grow in. Tall and strong. Thine axe will never fall on me. But I will not wait 100 years. Die, Mordor. Take that, loser. Big rot. Uh, in the wood today, Cutter, and wait, what? No, that's not you. You don't talk like that. Dark thoughts of trees, axes, and bloody sap cling in your skin. You shake them off like a dreadful cobwebs. You're not sure what just happened, but you turn over the, the formerly terribly cursed fedora in your hands. You feel confident that the curse which plagued the starchy little fell thing is finally gone for good. You put the hat back on. It nearly sparkles now. Upgrade! Now they... You've got to reckon with it's whether you're kind of a guy who'd go around wearing a fedora. I love it. I love the fedora. It's so good. How'd it go? I, uh, it worked, I guess. Great. What's it like? I had some kind of crazy dream. There was a woodcutter that was me, I guess, and there's these talking trees, and one of them had sinned. You know what? Never mind. Some kind of crazy dream is plenty for me. Okay, good. Oh, let's go to bed. Your room. I went to unpack my stuff and now it's on fire. Everything except bizarrely the stamp from Murray's letter. You got an item stamp from Murray's letter. Okay, everything's gone. Shelf for knickknacks and I, yeah, that word. There's an old rag doll on top of the shelf. Must be left by a previous tenant. Walk away from the shelf. You should acquire- Yes, we can acquire a bunch of stuff and put it on in here. Unfortunately, no shows have been invented yet. <laughs> We're gonna fill this room full of so much crap. Jacob Marley. A dream about school. It's a poster of my favorite literary ghost. Ooh! Lots of people in this hallway. It seems. Talk to one of them. Hello. Hello. Nice faces you've got there. Do you know which locker is mine? I can't remember which locker is mine. I'm sorry. I do not know. It's all right. I'll figure it out eventually. Ah, uh, check the first one. Check the second one. First locker revealing a thriving call of units. The second locker is full of peanut butter. The third locker contains a shiny shrine to Babe Ruth. The fourth locker is empty. The fifth locker is filled with cookbooks, but they're all in French. The sixth locker opens into a vast, uncaring emptiness of space. You slam it shut quickly as to not suffocate. There is no seventh one. I said check the seventh one. I said, and I said there's only six lockers. Check the seventh locker now. Oh, jeez. You look into the seventh locker. It's filled with old school papers. Look at the papers. They've all got your name on them. They're your papers. Read one. How I Spent My Summer by Ram Ram Rath, age six. This summer, I visited Uncle Murray. Uncle Murray is funny. He knows magic. I had a fun time with Uncle Murray. The end. Look under the papers. Underneath the pile of school papers, you find... Ugh. You've got an item. Overdue library. Library book. Jammin. Our founder. Bransworth Gorvunculus the third. That is quite the name. This lady looks friendly. Talk to her. Hello there. You must be. She flips through the book on her desk. Ah, there we are. Wrath. Ram Ram Wrath. Um, yes, I am Ram Ram Wrath. I am your academic uh, advisor. It is time for you to choose your class. 
Ah, I see what they did here. But I dropped out and realized certainly, but you must, however, choose a class. Okay. Ah, okay, I get it. This is where I pick a character class. Now then, it looks like there are three classes for you to choose from. There is advanced kicking and throwing. This class is for pig skinners. And then we've got, and then we have an overview of cheese curd, cheese? It's just curd. I don't know why I keep saying cheese. Of curd conjuring. This class is for cheese wizards. And finally, weird time signatures 504. This class is for jazz agents. Uh, I'm actually kind of interested in the cheese wizard. As trained chef Magi, cheese wizards use their intellect and mysticality to it. I'm already building on that, so maybe that. Uh, in combat, they wield hard elemental cheeses to damage their foes, soft soothing cheeses to heal themselves and their allies. Let me look at the other ones first. As accomplished athletes, Peg Skinners use their muscle to solve problems. In combat, they prefer direct application of physical force, pun uh, punctuated by giving the occasional noogie. That doesn't seem to have as much utility. Jazz Agent, Masters of Sun Competition and imp improv Improvisation. Jazz Agents use their rhythm and moxie to move through the world. In style and combat, when they attack with subtly weakening their enemy and stacking the odds in their favor over time. Cheese wizard. I love it. I am a cheese wizard. You're a cheese wizard, Ram Ram. I'm a what? <coughs> Brilliant. Now then, there's just a minor, the minor matter of your minor. Looks like you've already completed it, but it doesn't say what you studied. Oh, God. Cryptobotany. Applied inse insectology. I minored in... Uh, what do I pick? Ah, an insectologist. So you're an expert in bugs and birds and bees and such. Okay, we cryptobotanist, so uh, you're an expert in all manner of plant-based or oh a lot about rocks and gems and hopes and dreams. Uh, I'm stuck between the plants and let's pick two. Ah, an insectologist. Yes. You got a perked insectologist. Well, I believe that we're done. Feel free to wake up and go about your day. Er, well, how would I do that? She smiles and points at the door to the right side of the screen. I mean, right side of your dream. Just through that door. Okay, thank you. I'm excited about this. Go through. Do I get to keep the library book from my, uh, my dream? Ooh, inspirational music. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. You awake feeling surprisingly refreshed. Yesterday's adventures leaving you none the worse for wear. Your effects reset each day. Ah, oh, dang. Morning, Ram Ram. How'd you sleep? Wait, why are you still wearing those wet clothes? All of my other clothes burned up in a freak lug luggage fire. Ah, jeez. That's weird and unfortunate. You seem to be less surprised by it than I would expect. We've gotten... a accustomed to weird and unfortunate stuff happening around here you i can we the music excuse me beautiful uh you can pick out some clothes from the shop out front if you don't mind looking like somebody's dusty old grandpa i'll be all right thanks anyway well, once you've got the sleep out of your eyes, I've got another mission for you. Another curse thing? Yeah. I've had my eye on it for a while, but it keeps moving around. Mostly the readings put it at the local speakeasy. At the back of the alley, th uh, at the other end of the block, the artifact isn't there right now, but that's where I would start looking. Maybe you can pick up on some clues. Okay, what am I looking for? It appears to be a watch of some kind, a pocket watch, or maybe a wrist watch. It can't be certain. A watch in the speakeasy in the alley. Got it. <clears throat> Anything else? You'll need a password to the speakeasy. It's fiddlesticks. Also, let me give you this to-do list. It's enchanted to always show you whatever's written on the chalkboard here. Nice. Pretty neat trick. There's some meat for the expenses too. The army surplus door should have anything you need in case things get rough. Got a hundred meat? 
That's ominous, but thanks. All right, let's... Let's skadoodle. Chapter one, welcome to Ocean City. Okay, well, we need to go here first for supplies. The proprietor stands behind the counter. I keep fighting the hiccups and it's killing me on the inside. Introduce yourself. Hi there, my name is Ram Ram. Hello, fellow war enthusiast. I am Herschel, Herschel Wood. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm an enthusiast. Oh yeah, sure, whatever, it's cool. What, yeah. I mean, that's awesome or whatever. Herschel's expression doesn't change. Can I interest you in any fine historical memorabilia? Ask about the dubious grenades. Oh yeah, they're proudly fine. Why does the box say... Oh God. He looks at the grenades and looks at you. You uh, say, how would you like to do some field research? I've got a bad feeling about this. He hands you a bunch of grenades. You got item, dubious Cola Wars grenade. Try them out the next time you're in a fight. When you're all done, come back and let me know how it went. Hmm, okay. See what's for sale. <clears throat> wow. Okay. Okay, so I, we already have a crowbar. We don't need that. Oh, these are my things. I don't want to sell that. I don't want to sell anything. I'm kind of worried. I mean, I could do the, the water. Because I never, I never bother with carrying effects. I just think it wastes a turn. That one sounds pretty good. Let's get that. Wow, our upgrade chart got, uh, pretty, uh, pretty big. Okay, so we got that. What is it? Accessory. Aw, oh, dang it. So we've got two, two, three. It does add to item drops, which is nice, but... We do mysticality. That does two, three, three. I shouldn't have wasted any money right there. Dang it. Okay. Well, I, I wasted 25 meat, so I'm smart. Why is she, she so creepy? Let's check it out. You weep between the various trash cans. Wait, wait, wait. There's a car. Oh, I thought it could hit me. Dang it. <laughs> This alley is where Jessica said the speakeasy was. Yeah, let's go. Knock. Uh, I think it's fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks? Okay, come in. But you better not be... Okay, okay, I'm not. Okay. Ooh. 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 Get it. Wait, are those the two that I sucked up? Wait, weren't you the fishman from the Wash Your Eye basement? You're so used to thinking about where things go once you put them in a tube. Say hello. Hey, remember me from the tube? Beat it, bud. We're off the clock. Uh, I didn't realize you could talk. You could talk about anything you like. Disc Dickens, Flaubert, Flubert, Flob, Flubert. I don't know. Okay. Um. Sounds fun, but I got places to be. Son. This guy loves hitting spoons together. This lady seems to be dancing to a different song than other people. This guy seems to be infected with the Charleston fever. Get it, buddy. Oh. Oh, oh, spoon guy in the back. Oh, ho, ho, ho. This lady is making ethereal music with. Yeah, spoon guy. He was all over the place. Uh, spirit filled glasses. It's weirdly responsible of this legal poison dispensary to have first aid kit. See what's in there. You got an item gauze pad. Activated charcoal. Okay. There's more of those symbols on the ground people are obviously on a first date and you shouldn't bother them there's a door here we should open it Lori drives it here go down to the speakeasy you can get us some giggle juice here don't bother him he's bouncing stop doing that uh milky eyed socks talk to him he turns his head towards you and smiles buy him a drink yeah let's do it 
Spent five meat. After a few moments of sips, he clears his throat and speaks. Distilled to its essence, a lake is just a valley abandoned. Okay. Let's leave him. I, I have a feeling you just... Hey, hey, it's the Spittoon! <laughs> if you've seen anything or played the West of Loathing, that's, that's a big part of it. The man behind the bar is shaking up a storm. Hello, he grins. Hello, baby. Welcome to Oliver's place. My name's Ram Ram. Whatever you say, baby. Are you Oliver? Oh, heck no. I'm, <laughs> I'm Fancy Dan the Cocktail Man. Pleased to meet you, Dan. Hey, do you happen to know what time it is? Perhaps because you have a watch on you? Sorry, baby. The only thing around here who carries a pocket watch is the owner, Oliver Gluck. And he left about an hour ago to pick up a latest shipment of hooch. From who? From whom, baby? Before I was Fancy Dan the Cocktail Man, I was Fancy Dan the English Teacher. Sorry, from whom? From the mob guy we always get it from. When's the hooch coming? The old refrigerator factory. I see. How do I get there? Dan grabs cocktail napkin and hands it to you. Uh, thanks? Oh, haha. -ha, wrong napkin. Here. He takes the napkin back and grabs a different one with a couple of icons scrawled on it. Take the napkin? A mapkin? You got an item. Ocean City napkin map. As you take the napkin, Dan points to one of the icons on it. We're here in Murray's store on Plunkett Street, so if you go out the alley and then head straight for the edge of the nap napkin, you can't miss the factory. Location of Plunkett Street, location fridge factory. Okay, cool. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, we got a beer. Oh, things are a little strange. I don't know if we should have done that. It won't budge, must be barred shut from the other side. Okay, I think that's all that there was in here. Uh, I'm assuming it's this way because we came into town from the left walk somewhere. Sure uh, Let's go to the fridge factory Howdy feller names Elmer O'Kelly. I ain't been able to find work in my town any chance you could spare three meat so I could buy uh, Some caviar. I'd be <laughs> I'd be really grateful caviar not just say a sandwich. Well, I am high I figure I don't know what I'd call three meat caviar, but that is a name in real high. Uh, sure. There you go, bud. Thanks, Heat Feller. You're real good egg. No problem. Bye. I'm too generous. I know it's going to lead me to getting messed up. This toll booth was obviously stolen and dragged here. <laughs> you can see the drag marks in the ground. These folks look like they're here for some serious business. Try to make a deal. Whoa there, buddy. This is a private party. Club members only. Yeah, like you said, club members only. What kind of club? It is the fraternal order of people who bribed us more than we're earning as gate guards. Fop bum egg? I've never heard of them. How do I join? <laughs> what are you thick? I thought I'd, uh, it was obvious, pal. You give us meat. How much? 500, yeah, 500 meat. Oh no, very hard fight. Let's let's try it. Why not? I'm already dead Let's try the Ooh, I could do that I need something that like attacks everybody they have 15 HP. I'm gonna die. Uh, toss at at mob capo dealing 10 physical damage unless it malfunctions in which case who knows I'm it's gonna kill me watch this. I, I knew it. I Have one hit. Okay, let's just do a little little that <laughs> Butt strike I'm already dead. Okay. Well, it was a bad idea to use the grenades To bounce little buddy <laughs> sad you gain effect covered with scabs. Fine. Okay. Well, obviously we can't do that. It says we can just wander. So can we like? Can we just like? Let's go to the right there. You hear a buzzing noise, which you trace a small swarm of large mosquitoes drifting lazily around the sewer grate. 
They barely stay aloft. They're so inflated with stolen human blood. Dang, the city really dropping the ball on their public health measures. Ooh! Do City Hall's job. Um... You do some freelance extermination work and pay yourself with a bunch of blood cells that you scrape from the bottom of your shoe after you're done. You got an item. Hematic Ichor? I don't think I could choose where I wanted to. You encounter a hobo who is sauntering down the sidewalk with a bindle over his shoulder, whistling a jaunty tune. Well, hey there, fella. Aren't you Ram Ram? I'm Garrett Shatner. Uh, hi. How do you know my name? Oh, hobos, we're tight-knit. Little community. When someone's been helping us out, the word gets around. Well, that's nice. A little creepy, but a nice unbalanced. Why don't you come visit our camp? We'll be glad to have you. Where is it? Well, you just head down the... 12th street till you see a lot where the hardware store used to be and then take you know what it'll be simpler if i just mark this on your map for you yes please he cool let's go let's go check out check out the hobo camp that's real slow I wonder if that's loading screen as you're walking up gabby strikes up a conversation so you're new in ocean city your first time at it yeah that's right well, thinks you've got it off, got of it? What thinks have you got of it? Okay, that was confusing. Well, to be honest with you, it seems a little rundown. Yes, Gabby understands you. It's much nicer before economy happened. Lots of people, very excitement. Oh, oh, have you seen the boardwalk yet? It's like cat wearing pajamas. <laughs> what? It has games and a future teller? Well, that does sound, uh, cat wearing pajamas. Nice. Let's go check it out later. Boardwalk's all the way down in the corner. It's Howie, the hobo you met in the boxcar last night. Talk to him. Hi there, Howie. How's it going? Well, hey, if it isn't Ram Ram, nice to see you again. Looks like the rumor you heard about hobo camp turned out to be on the level. Oh, sure, the old hobo code is pretty trustworthy as a general rule, so I should be nice to all the hobos. You're pretty good at the harmonica, Howie. All right. Okay. Probably shouldn't walk around here. You wake people up. How about we jump around here? Okay. <laughs> this guy is in a skate of washboard induced ecstasy. Talk to him. Okay. I'm only here for items, bro. Oh, little hobo camp boxcar. That's cute. Due to supply chain difficulties, the grub car is currently BYOG. Condiments are still available to camp residents. Bring your own grub, huh? Um. Oh, I should have picked the cryptography because then I could have seen what the symbols are on the ground. I guarantee that's what it's for. Scorching the corner. Hey, buddy. That's pretty interesting. Hobo literacy. Neat. So the stuff in this room. Okay. Now can I read stuff? Well, I'm out of here. Hobo code knowledge in increased. Cool. Got a question. Can you teach me about the hobo code? Dang it. Okay, let's try the boardwalk then. You hear a ringing of cathedral bells and you turn to see their source. Unsurprisingly, it's a cathedral. Unless you're naturally surprised by cathedrals. They're so big and pointy. Could be hiding around the corner. Oh, cool. Let's keep wandering around. Okay, you just find stuff by... Uh, excuse me, sir. D do you fear your safety in this dangerous city full of hoodlums and criminals? Well, I didn't until you said that. I carry a spare change of underwear. And I've already used one today. Friend, I think I have much more convenient solution to your problems. Okay, what are you selling? He holds up a small case and opens it, displaying a s selection of the teeniest pistols you've ever seen. Hmm, how much? Um, I don't use guns, so I'm gonna pass. No, thanks. 
All right, if you get murdered, don't come crying to me unless you're buying it. Okay, okay. I can't go anywhere. Hands in the air, bucko. You're on Tin Lizzie's turf, and this is a stick up. You turn to see a woman in oil stained coveralls pointing a gun like tool in your direction. What the. Is that a caulking gun? <laughs> stick up isn't usually such a literal phrase. Actually, it's a grease gun, so I guess it's more like a slick up. Ha <laughs> ha, gross. Everybody's a critic. Give me your wallet. Uh, I'm gonna grab her gun. You pull out your wallet, nervously fumble it, dropping it to the woman's feet. She growls and reaches for it. You swiftly grab her wrist and twist the grease gun out of her hand. Hey, looks like the grease is on the other, um, lug nut? Honestly, I don't know anything about cars. You're gonna regret messing with tin lizzies. I'm gonna regret touching this filthy grease gun more. Go on, scram. Cool, got a grease gun. Probably you could sell that, or no, that seems like it would have some utility. You can't sell anything in this game, I swear. Oh, more insects. Cool. I straight up cannot go, oh, because I keep hitting wander. Ah, that's not smart. Uh, God, yeah, walk over to him. Okay, we're going here, I guess. He's just crisscross applesauce on top of it. Talk to him. Uh, hi, I'm Marvin. Hi, Marvin. I'm Ram Ram. What are you doing up there? A stunt. A stunt doesn't seem particularly stunty. You're just sitting there. Yeah, but I'm sitting here for, he looks at his watch, seven months, 15 days, nine hours, and 41 minutes. Why? Why? It's a stunt. Okay, but are you protesting something or trying to attract attention of some kind? Nope. Do you have money riding on this? Is it for a better contest? Nope. I feel like you really don't get the concept of a stunt. I guess not. Say, would you mind helping me with something? Sure, what's up? I've mainly been eating snackle cakes while I've been up here, and I'm out. Can you grab some more for me? Snackle cakes? Uh, are you serious? I'll admit, they're an acquired taste. And I guess nobody other than you wanted to acquire the taste of powdered milk mixed with sawdust with the nails still in it because snackle mills went out of business years ago. Yeah, but there's shelf life of those things incredible. It's what makes them so good for stunt rations. I've got a supply from Harem's Grocery down the street. Could you go pick me up some more? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll be back. Uh... I'm Rachel. Rachel who? Rachel Wrath. Sorry, I don't know anyone named Rachel Wrath. Well, that's lame. Cool. Let's go there. Young man wearing a flower dusted apron sta swaggers up to you with a loaf of French bread on his shoulder and an arrogant sneer on his face. Hey, man. This is Doughboy Territory. If you want to walk down the street, you got to pay the toll. Uh, what's the total? Five meat? How about five knuckles? Um, for some reason I don't trust that one in the back. Didn't mean to hit him first. Do I dare try that again? Yeah, let's do that. For some reason, the, the minion in the back was worrying me. Hey! He hit my burb! Get wrecked. Let's flip him. Ah, oh, dang it. I should have threw a rock first. Loaf bash. It's okay. We'll be fine. Get him, Gabby. He got him. Uh, you got item clammy dough glob. Okay. Ooh. And experience. I should probably fight everything for experience, right? Hiram, milk, dentifrice, beer. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I guess we'll have to find out what's inside of there in the next episode. I am officially out of time for this recording. I'm having a lot of fun with this game, and I hope you are too. And until next video, love you later. Love you always. And I'll see you all then.